Many of us want to go to Africa, but when we start to do an actual research, we get overwhelmed, there are a lot of questions and concerns. In our first video, we already answered three questions. Which countries and places to visit in Africa? What is the best time of the year to visit Africa? How to make sure that we are safe? Do we have to have a special medical insurance? Do we have to have any special vaccinations? If you haven't watched this video yet, please go ahead and watch it. The link is posted below. And in this video, we will speak about the remaining questions. What are the requirements of entry for South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, and Tanzania? Should we plan all the places and activities ahead of time while we are still in the United States, or should we plan them the way we go? How to make sure that we get the most out of our money and not being taken advantage of? Should we exchange the money or will they accept credit cards and US dollar? How to pack what to take with us? What about the internet and cell phone? Do we need any special international plan? South Africa doesn't require any visas, but you need to show them your airline ticket flying out of their country. Upon arrival to Zimbabwe, Victoria Falls International Airport, we applied for Casa Uni Visa right there. It cost $100 for both. And it allows you to enter Zimbabwe, Zambia and Botswana for a limited period of time. Not every airport is issuing Casa Uni Visa. There is a website, link below, where you can go and read more about it. Or just follow our itinerary and you will be fine. In order to get to Tanzania, we needed a separate visa. We had to apply online while we are still in the United States. It is a one-year visa and it is $200 for both. There are a lot of websites offering this visa, but we went to the American government website and got the link from them. Those both links are posted below. We applied and paid while we were still in the United States and we got an approval in two weeks via email. As about any other documents, they ask us to show them passports and our COVID vaccination cards. They ask us to show them our airline tickets flying back home to the United States. In some airports, they asked us to complete some simple forms with general information, such as your name, gender, your flight number, and the name of the hotel you are planning to stay in their country. Next question. Should we plan and pay for all the places and activities ahead of time while we are still in the United States, or should we pay the way we go? While in the United States, of course, we had a general idea of what we want to visit and where we want to go. But we tried to avoid to pay for anything ahead of time, unless we had to. For example, while in the United States, we paid ahead for our airline tickets flying from the United States to South Africa and back from Tanzania back to the United States. Also, we paid for our airline tickets flying from South Africa to Zimbabwe because the country you're entering in wants to see when are you flying out of their country. And the third thing we had to pay ahead of time, it was visa to Tanzania because it's supposed to be applied and paid from the United States territory. I recommend this approach for a few reasons. First, we didn't want to provide our credit card information to some unknown and possibly unsafe websites. We didn't want to be charged in case if our air flights are canceled. 
because every hotel we stayed at had free internet access, it didn't take long to book your next airplane flight or next hotel stay a day or two in advance. And finally, it felt good to have some flexibility and less pressure of meeting any future commitments. Our next question, how to make sure that we get the most out of our money and not being taken advantage of? I'll be honest with you, planning this trip was a little bit confusing. First, I couldn't understand why in a country where the cost of living is so low, the prices for Western tourist services are so high. And we speak about thousands of dollars per person. When we talk to some local people and they promise to us to give us a great deal without a middleman, in reality, their prices were much more expensive in comparison to those that we have already found online. In many places, there are no fixed prices. So it seems as they try to overcharge you. And then if you express some confusion, then there will be a lot of bargaining. After a while, it gets old and tiresome. Nowadays, tourists are smart. They go online and do their homework. This is why I want to post this video with all the prices and details so you are aware and you will not be taken advantage of. Luckily, we encounter with a few wonderful companies and personal tour guides and drivers. We use them and we like them and we would recommend them to our friends and family. I will provide their information later on when we speak about our itinerary in details. So you can contact them via their email address or WhatsApp number. You can ask them any questions while you are still home. And just a reminder that we are not sponsored and we are not affiliated with nobody. Our next question, should we rent a car and drive ourselves or should we have a private driver? I would not recommend renting a car and the reasons are, first of all, they are driving on the wrong side. Also, rentals are not cheap. It may be easily $100 a day or more depending on the vehicle and you need a good, reliable vehicle suitable for safari. The traffic lights and pedestrian crosswalks are very rare, so people can cross everywhere. Also, domestic animals and wild animals are crossing everywhere. Wow! That's great. Cars, motorcycles, and bicycles are driving on your right, on your left, and everywhere they can squeeze. There are almost no speed limit signs, but the cops checking your speed limit on the roads quite often. Per hour driver, they are very corrupt and they love bribes, so they will be very happy to stop you. In addition, their gasoline stations are very sparse. You have to always keep it in mind to make sure that you will not run out of gas. Their roads are really bad, especially in the parks. Oh, wow. Dirt, gravel and ditches. So we saw quite a few vehicles on the road that are broken or have flat tires or stuck in a ditch. Many roads are one lane only. So it is quite a challenge to maneuver it around when you meet with another vehicle. Especially when you drive on a steep road alongside the ledge. Ouch. <laughs> 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 
Should we get out of the vehicle, Mama? I'm scared. Where are you, Mama? There's another one, oh my gosh. And especially when it is foggy and you don't see anything around you. A lot of areas with no cell phone connection. Think about it. What if you drive in the wilderness, you got lost, you out of gas, you have a flat tire, there are no people around, but you're surrounded by hungry animals and you have no cell phone connection. Another question, should we exchange the money or will they accept credit cards and US dollar? Each of these countries have their own currency, but luckily everybody accepts credit card and US dollar. We exchanged some money in South Africa and Tanzania to pay for some taxes, but we didn't have to do that. Often hotel will arrange a taxi for you and you will pay for the taxi, for example, to the airport with your hotel bill using your credit card. Next question, how should we pack what to take with us? Pack as light as you can. Make sure you have only carry on small uh, suitcase on the wheels and a bag. This trip has a lot of lights, so it is much less stressful knowing that all your belongings are with you. Clothing should be reusable and dry quickly, so you can wash it and wear again. Make sure you can layer it up. For morning safaris, make sure you have some serious warm clothes, including a hat, gloves and fabric face mask. For day safari, never wear black or dark blue. One day I was wearing a black long sleeve top and tsetse flies were biting me non-stop. All my torso and arms were burning. Have a hat with the holding strap. Otherwise, during safari, it will fly away and of course sunscreen. Travel adapter set. During our trip, we encountered with at least two or three different outlets, but this one is a must. You will need it everywhere. And the last question is about the internet and cell phone connection. Our provider is Verizon and we got flat rate travel pass of $10 a day. So if you use it today, you will have to pay $10. If you are not planning to use your internet today, then turn your cell phone on uh, airplane mode. So at the hotel, I used their free internet using my computer and I kept my cell phone on an airplane mode most of the time. So now we finished with all the questions and let me stop right here. In my next video, I will provide you with our exact itinerary and step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I will provide you with important links, prices and contact information of those people and services that we personally used, liked and that we would recommend to our friends and family. I will tell you all the truth about the amazing things Africa has to offer and about some unpleasant things that we should avoid. So my goal is that after watching these videos, you feel knowledgeable and comfortable going to Africa. If you have any questions or suggestions, I would love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe so you can watch my next video.